listeners and subscribers. Hope all is well. So I'm hoping one of the things that you like about me is that occasionally I get controversial, okay? I'm not afraid to criticize Trump. I'm not afraid to blow away the liberals, all right? Also, I'm not afraid to go against the standard model and tout uh, references for alternative narratives, okay? Uh, and we're here, we're gonna, go, we're gonna go down the vaccine route, all right? So just stick with me, because even when the measles was first brought to North America in the 1400s by Europeans, supposedly, the mortality rate among those who had no natural immunity was only 10% then. Fast forward to modern times, just before the measles vaccine was developed in 1963, a mere 48,000 people were hospitalized, while 500 people died each year in the U.S. alone. To be clear, less than 2% of those hospitalized for measles died. Today, numbers are even fewer, okay? According to the CDC, for every 1,000 people who gets the measles, one or two might die, which is 0.2%, okay? There aren't even 1,000 cases of the measles uh, in the U.S. right now. All right. In fact, there are roughly 800 cases of the measles at the time of this recording, at least. Uh, taking U.S. Census data into account, there are approximately 327 million people in America, which means currently less than 0.3 percent of the population is infected. Staggering. All right. And if you're lucky enough to survive the measles, which is now an over 90 percent chance, I believe it's actually 98 percent chance uh, or 95 to 98 percent chance, you have lifetime immunity to the disease. OK, and the symptoms, well, they include cough, runny nose, fever, itchy eyes and a rash. All right. Uh, and about one in every 1000 cases uh, encephalitis, which is brain swelling, can occur. I, I will admit that, which is only 0.1 percent of cases, by the way. However, having too many beers can cause swelling and inflammation in the brain as well. OK, actually, if you've ever had a hangover, you've, you've likely had mild brain swelling. And get this, you're more likely to consume alcohol than catch a case of the measles. Uh oh. You see what I'm saying? So the, 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 the vaccine lobby is just really powerful with their misinformation and how they spin this stuff. OK, but only if we had herd immunity. Right. If only we had an over 95 percent vaccination rate, we wouldn't have to worry about the measles. Right. Right. Just shoot yourself up and your, your children with this drug and everything will be OK. Right. Well, wrong. Let's let's take a look at China, for example. Since 2008, China has had regular vaccination rates over 95 percent, which is the golden standard for what they tout as herd immunity. OK, and that's regularly debunked and they still have outbreaks of the measles. OK, 95 percent vaccination rates and, and beyond. And they still have outbreaks of the measles. OK, and they have a bigger population than the U.S. as well, somewhere in the neighborhood of a billion or more. And if we're talking about the U.S., death from measles in the U.S. is rare. The last death was in 2015, and before that was 12 years prior, okay? Though you can bet this is going to change. And when we do get that death here, expect it to be shouted from the rooftops, expect it to be blown up out of proportion. But I hope you remember some of the numbers here in today's video. Because the precedent being set around vaccines is more dangerous than this measles outbreak. Okay, measles will continue to come and go, but the overcorrections we make now will become the legislative foundations that will carry long into the future, future generations long into that, all right? They're manufacturing the consent to force something into your body, for your safety, no doubt, right? But since when does a government care about your safety? I mean, come on. The U.S. government was caught red-handed intentionally giving Guatemalan citizens STDs. They even had to apologize for it. So do you think they're above something of the ilk on the vaccine topic here in the United States? And get this, get this, even if you get the measles vaccine, you can still get the measles. That's about a 7% chance, which by the way, in the US is higher than your chance of dying from the measles if you contracted it. So it makes you wonder if this is really about safety. If they can force a cocktail of chemicals into you and your child for pick your reason, isn't it only a matter of time before they can force the chip or the mark of the beast? I mean, why not? It's for our safety. You know, I hope we don't have short memories. I hope we didn't forget what happened in New York, where they were posting fines up to $1,000, even misdemeanors if you didn't have vaccines, so you could pos uh, potentially go to jail. So jail time, fines of $1,000 for not having vaccines, and they're poised to take that model all across the states, not just in New York, okay, not just in California, and they're poised to expand that. And, and I mean, look at the, the rhetoric that we're seeing, right? The New Yorker may have exposed public to uh, measles in Tucson, okay? Health officials warned of possible measles, uh, measles exposure at Tucson Airport, okay? Because what they've talked about is that these outbreaks have been tied into international travel. So if you don't think we're going to see travel restrictions tied into this, and we already saw what happened after 9-11 with the real IDs, and essentially you have to have a, uh, you know, a stamp on your card that says I can travel, you bring your passport with you. And we're talking about travel restrictions. And just like the, the biometric entry exit visa tracking system that's going to be expanded on Trump's wall, it's going, to, it's going to be meant to encompass people like us. 
That's what this is for. That's what these systems are out there for. I mean, that's how they manufacture our consent. So the laws are already in place uh, once things go nuclear. OK, once things go uh, totalitarian and they flip the switch, all the laws that are there to you know take away our rights and freedoms, right? The, the martial law scenarios, all the executive orders that become available to a president after a declaration of certain emergencies, which can be arbitrary. That's what we're going to see. We're going to see this. OK, and the system is already there. Just like, you know, we worship law, we worship science. We have the religion. We have the one world religion. OK, that people are going to accept. We're going to have the one world currency and we're on our way to the one world government. Before we get there, they're just going to make a mess of everything. So ultimately, we accept uh, whatever measures they come up with. And that's what I mean by manufacturing consent. Anyway, uh, before this one gets away from me, I'm going to sign off. California Carter. Talk to you later.